Okay, this video is going to go over adding our section view, our head with the section view uh, piece in there. So let's open our Inventor template up here. We're going to File, and I'm sorry, we're going to Place. Let's Place Views, go to Base, and you want to navigate to find the head view. So you're going to grab the head or the head part and open. Okay, and um, when we place head, it comes in, zoom in a little bit, it comes in uh, looking at us this way, and this is the orientation that we need, okay, and if you compare that to what we're trying to do, that's the orientation that we're looking for. The one thing that we'll not do, like we've done with our other views, is we're not going to uh, project that additional view on there. We're just going to leave it with that standard view. Let's change this, type this to be head, okay, so and head is coming in at a one-to-one -one scale. We're going to turn our light on, um, our, so that's visible, and we'll show that. So head is in place. We can uh, edit our scale here, make this smaller as we've done with our other views. This is one eighth. Say okay. All right. The section view is is um, a view where we've sliced this part, and so we have to create a slice. And we're going to use the section command to do that. And that's right here. Okay, so the easiest thing to do is click on that. Then you need to click on your view. And now it's active. And you'll see it will lock to the center. Our example locks to the center. So we're going to click. We're going to pull to the center and left click again. And we're going to pull to the top. And we can left click again. Now if I right click and continue, that puts me into this um, view setup okay and and so I want to pull this out um, right here and if I compare what we are trying to match so we're trying to match this this looks pretty similar to what we're trying to match but really this isn't the best way to do a section view um, section view lines should extend a little beyond the view uh, view plane but what this is is this is cutting a wedge here and showing us that wedge that's been cut out. It's cutting it right along the center line. So that's how I, I drew that. But I, I'm, I'm going to modify it very slightly for you guys here. And you can do this in your uh, actual example. Let's take this dot and just pull it a little further above. Pull it straight up. And that moves that section plane just a little bit above there. And then with this dot, if you pull this down and around and a little bit further out, and maybe at this angle, uh, you see the corresponding slice over here. So it's okay if you'd like to display it this way. If you want to leave it uh, completely horizontal along the center line, you can do that as well. So this is creating our section view, and now we're going to annotate this. So the first thing you'll note when you, you look at this, it brings a scale up along with section, and we compare what we're trying to match you see section is a smaller text. It's the same size text as our scale. So first thing we do is let's modify that. We're going to double click on this. And we don't need scale as it's redundant. So we're going to delete the, the uh, scale area. And we are going to modify this to a 1 8 inch size, 0.125 size, and say OK. And that does make that smaller. Um, Head is going to drag over here, and uh, these guys are going to line up a little. And we might pull this down just a bit, um, but try to get them to line up. So now in dimensioning, looking at our drawing, we have several things going on. We have standard dimensions of diameter for each of these circles here. We have a whole note. We have a chamfer note. We have a fillet note and we have some length dimensions that are in place. Before we begin any of this, we're going to add our center lines and our center marks. Okay, so because we use those in our dimensioning. Let's go back to Inventor. Go to Annotate, your center mark. Let's uh, click the outside circle when we add a center mark. And our center line, we're going to click the middle of this and left click again and right click and create so start stop and create so here's your center lines now like other traditional dimensioning tools we're going to grab 
dimension, just dimension out the diameter. Okay, and okay with that. You're going to dimension the diameter, um, the outside diameter here uh, of, of this one. And we're going to dimension the diameter of this hole right here. Okay, as we pull those out. So those are our di uh, diameter dimensions. Um, and technically that is a hole, so it probably should be a whole note. Um, we do not show it that way. Uh, here it is um, and I did that in in reverse um, we don't show it that way um, but that 0.5 is technically a hole that has been drilled through this so we could put a hole note through there saying it's it's a through hole um, just to show that hole and thread if I take this to that same feature that's an alternative way of showing this. It's probably more appropriate way of, of uh, showing this feature right here using the hole and thread note. Okay. Um, now we're going to continue with our uh, dimensioning. We have some linear dimensions down here. Just click the two, pull that down and say, okay. And then from this point to our end point, uh, oops, I hit escape, dimension this point to the end point, and pull down where those are in line with each other. A note here, the 20 is on this side, um, and that's because I started on this side. So the side you start on is the side that the number appears on. You're trying to match this, and those are matched with each other right there. Okay, These two notes, the uh, fillet and chamfer notes, our uh, feature notes and I'm going to back uh, over here actually fill it is a dimension so we're going to stay with dimension let's uh, zoom in here now very important when you're dimensioning a fillet you want to get the fillet uh, or radius icon that appears there that's that little circle with the arrow if it appears like that that's a linear and we don't want that we we don't want a linear we want the radius and you also don't want the green dot so get the little radial feature click and pull out that gives you your radial dimension okay and now you want to type fill it in here hit enter and in caps spell fill it out that will add fill it to this we also have a chamfer note that's put in over here so that's a feature note right here we're going to click on the angle oops not that one as I hit escape chamfer we're going to click on the angle and this and we need to uh, pull that chamfer note out there. Now, because my section view uh, has changed a little bit, um, where I put this chamfer note, um, might, I might have to move that compared to, um, you know, here, the section A uh, is, is kind of getting in the way. So I may have to do some uh, adaptions there. So I do need to correct uh, some things just because it's getting a little bit crowded. Um, and it's probably more appropriately for me to put this chamfer up top. So if I hit escape, I will select that, delete it, and I'm going to put my chamfer up here. So you see me do chamfer again. We select the angle. We select what we're chamfering from, and we pull out from there. And what I like to do is uh, escape. I'm going to move chamfer because it needs to be in caps. So we're going to hit enter. And then in caps, spell chamfer again. Okay, and say okay. So that puts my chamfer down there on that angle. Um, we do have a hole note that's referencing this hole right here. And so we're going to take hole and thread. We're going to click on that hole. And we're going to pull that out here as well. Just like that. Um, now, placing our center line in here. Uh, we need to do a centerline bisector. Centerline bisector, you're going to click and click, and that gives you your centerline through. Go back and compare. Look and see what are you missing. So we moved this up top there, and we have everything else, our section, our scale. Just compare what you got. That's creating your section view.